sat down at the table in the kitchen and was doing some paperwork, and all of a sudden, a massive headache. Uh, 10 times, I would imagine, worse than a migraine hit. Slight dizziness, and the next thing, um, tingling, very fast tingling right down the arm, and painful and then tingling right on the left leg, foot, everything. And all of a sudden, I couldn't move. And my husband was in the bedroom reading a book. And I said, honey, can you come and help me? I can't move my arm or my leg. And by that time, I knew what it was. I said, would you call 911? No sooner had he put down the phone, and they were right in the driveway. So respond to this call, as soon as we walk in through the door, looking looking at her face, looking at us, like she's like looking at you with those eyes saying, I need help, something's wrong with me, I don't know what it is. She's scared, we could see this. Her husband was there, he's the one who called 911. He kind of stepped aside and allowed us to, to help his wife. And I actually don't remember him very much at all because he was kind of out of the way. He was allowing us to make sure she got to definitive care. The firefighter from Largo and his EMT, uh, they were kind of standing next to the patient talking to her. She, they had pretty much done all the preliminary stuff. From there, we went on to do a men's exam and to basically see exactly where she was having loss of mobility to kind of get a, a general baseline of what was going on with her. I realized she's going to go to the hospital. So I told my partner, hey, I'm going to be, I'm going to go get the stretcher. She could not move her left side com at all. So we tried to assist her to her feet and see if she could bear any weight at all, but she absolutely couldn't. So he picked her up and put her on the stretcher, and at that point, I could tell that she was a little scared because she realized she was not in control anymore of herself. And as we were wheeling her out, I kind of held her hand, and I asked her, how was her day? What was she doing right before we showed up and ruined it? They were very calm, relaxed. They moved very quickly and very professionally. One of the, lo the gals, the lovely gals, uh, she talked to me and held my hand the whole way, and that just, that just, alleviated all my fears because I knew I'd be all right. Once we got her into the back of the truck, uh, I told her we were going to be doing a few things and that we were going to be transporting her to Largo Med because she was having, possibly having a stroke. So we did a 12 lead. I started an IV and the entire time I was just talking to her and I could tell she was a little freaked out. She was kind of scared. It was a very bad day for her. We took her straight to CT and then we came back and we were gonna transfer her to the hospital bed from our stretcher. Without thinking, I put up my left leg, and it worked, and the arm worked, and everything came back. I held her hand again, and I told her to have a good day, and that I hope everything will work out the way it should. I am just so, I'm almost in tears, because I am just so impressed with this entire crew, the whole group of, of the EMTs, medics, they were just so professional. And I dread to think what the outcome might have been had I not had such professional attendance. This is one profession you actually don't feel like it's all just you. You always have somebody else who's there. You're, it's pretty much like a family. It may not be big to us, but it's very important to remember that it's big to everyone else. You forget that these are people who have lives, who have children, who have family, who have friends, people who care about them. And it's really hard to remember that when you run so many calls during the day, it's very important that we take our job seriously and that we know that we are there to help someone in the time of need.
ourselves to to let him go. Ian's just his glow that he has. He knows that he's loved by his parents. It's not often that we we come up on a scene as dramatic as Ian's and and see the outcome that we did see. So I got on my ATV and I started driving and um, I don't remember what happened, but I know that um, I fell off at the end of my street and I, I broke my wrist and I also got a traumatic brain injury and I fractured over a hundred bones in my uh, skull. The fire department was already assessing uh, Ian before we got there and my paramedic Brent was already talking to the fire department over the radio. They said, uh, we think we should probably do air transport upgrade. Is you can see that he had multiple skull fractures. It was textbook uh, uh, basilar skull fracture. We don't have a sense that life can completely change for you in a matter of seconds, but that's truly what happened. We continue our assessments on him. We noticed that he um, possibly had a lung collapse, so we stuck a needle in his chest to relieve the pressure. He started posturing. Uh, so we knew that it, it looked slim, his chance of survival. The phone call that no parent wants to receive, you know, your, your son just had a, an accident and he's being airlifted to a hospital. We, we had no doubt in our mind that this kid was not going to live, that, you know, it was just having fun with his kid, you know, his friends on Fuller and then, you know, now he's, now he's dead. And I mean, we thought about that all night long. I think as a parent, that's the hardest thing to do is to truly surrender for some, you know, to something that you can't control. He told us that Ian had had a traumatic brain injury and that, um, that he was not going to survive the night 
And that was the first of four times that we had to say goodbye to him. One day I happened to be at Bayfront two months or three months later after the incident and um, it took me a while to find the room but I finally found the room and as I walked in it was uh, it was a surreal feeling seeing him laying there and you know with his eyes open and his parents around him and uh, it was a crazy feeling just knowing that you know he's alive. And he spent 22 days in coma he was four months in the hospital he was in a wheelchair for a long time. One of the first things that um, we did after he came back from the hospitals was to visit um, Brent and Jay and thank them for what they did. It's a good feeling that, you know, that they do thank us and that they do want to keep in touch with us, but it's not us. <laughs> I didn't save his life. Someone upstairs saved his life. One day I was at work coming in to shift and this kid walked over to me and he's like, hey, do you remember uh, about a couple months back a kid had gotten a four-wheeler accident? And I'm like, yeah, I remember that. He said, that was me. I was so shocked. I, I thought I would never see him again. What they, everything that they decided to do and everything that they did was uh, really crucial to my survival. I pray to God every day thanking him for saving my life, and I also pray for Brent and Jay. How can you ever thank someone enough for saving the life of your son? There's just no, there's just no, no words. 10, 15 minutes that you're with a patient, the decisions that you make do make a difference. It was a change to, to hear from a parent or hear from a patient telling you about their condition instead of just, oh, thanks for the ride to the hospital, see you later, you know. It is a lot more nerve wracking than a normal call because it's, it's not a normal call. Um, so that's when it comes back all into your training and taking everything very seriously. We do it because we love it. You know, it's, it's, not, about, it's not about the money, it's not about the benefits, it's, it's all about Ian's story. And very rare do we, do we come across positive outcome. I'm playing table tennis, tennis, and um, I'm really hoping to get back to playing soccer again. With everything that I've gone through, that it's amazing that I'm still like here and alive. There are many moments that we're going to be able to enjoy Ian because of the life-saving um, decisions and choices that they made. <laughs>